Hi there, I'm Crystal. Welcome. I was diagnosed with idiopathic gastroparesis in 2004. Since then, I've become a wife, a mom, a dual certified coach, and I've spent the last 10 years helping people worldwide learn to live well with the condition. In today's video, I'm answering a question from one of you. If your gastroparesis has resolved, do you need to worry about it coming back? Stick around. Okay, so today I am answering an email that came in recently from a wonderful woman named Carrie, and Carrie has graciously agreed to let me answer her email on video because I really think this is going to be helpful to a lot of people. So I'm going to read the email. It's a little bit long, but I think the context is important and gives us a lot to dig into and talk about. So here we go. Hi, Crystal. Thank you so much for all you do to help people suffering with this condition. I was diagnosed back in July and I immediately ordered your books. I have to tell you, the best piece of advice was not to go on social media support groups. I had done that and I'm still scarred by what I read on the Facebook group. It was terrifying and although some things were helpful, a lot were negative. Now I come to my question. I am so fortunate to have recovered and I've been able to put weight back on and I'm feeling healthy and strong, but I can't shake the fear that this will come back. If you've had this condition, are you prone to getting it again? I'm still haunted by the Facebook group where the question was asked if this ever goes away, and someone said, you may get a break from it, but it's never gone. My gastric emptying test was normal in November, as well as another upper GI emptying scan. Now I just need to recover from the psychological impact. I'd love to hear your opinion on this, if you can have it for a period of time and never get it again. Thank you for what you do. It's truly comforting and helpful. So the main question in the email, which I don't actually think is the meat of this email at all, but we'll answer this and get it out of the way. Can you have gastroparesis and then it goes away and you never get it again? Yes. I mean, I guess we can't say never get it again for sure, but I have worked with, I know many people who had gastroparesis, it went away and it's been years and years and years and they are just fine and living a healthy, normal life. I actually just talked with my motility specialist for a video I recorded on GP and COVID. And if you haven't seen that, I will put a link to it. But he was talking about the fact that, you know, post-viral cases in particular, they often resolve over time. And so I think the idea that you might get a break, but it never goes away is is nothing more than somebody's opinion, to be completely honest. I would wager a great deal that that person is not a medical professional, is not a researcher, and is probably not a practitioner that actually works with gastroparesis patients day after day after day and has seen people recover and go on to live their life. So if the question there is, can you recover and stay recovered? I would say yes, absolutely. But I don't actually think that's the most interesting part of this email. So the first thing I want to talk about are these social media groups. And I do say in my books that especially when you're newly diagnosed, you probably should stay out of social media support groups. For a couple of reasons. One, exactly like Carrie said, a lot of the stuff in there is really scary. And there's not often a ton of support in support groups. There's often a lot of what I have called competitive suffering. And I think a lot of why support groups can feel very negative, can be scary, is if you think about it, they are naturally attracting the people who are struggling the most. People who are not struggling are not looking for a support group, right? I mean, if you think about the fact that there are millions and millions and millions of people worldwide who have gastroparesis, it's such a tiny minority of those people who are in these social media support groups, who are making accounts about gastroparesis on social media and and sharing, you know, their opinions and their experiences. And so, you're naturally getting a skewed perspective of what it means to have gastroparesis. And from the beginning, that's why I started my blog at livingwithgastroparesis.com. That's why eventually I went on to write my books. A lot of what's out there is really skewed toward the most negative outcome possible. And there's a lot out there that is intentionally really scary. 
And I think that comes from a good place. It comes from a place of wanting to raise awareness, for example. There's a shock factor that people want to attract attention to say, this is an important message that you understand people have this condition and we need support and we need funding for research. But I think for people who actually have gastroparesis, a lot of that is incredibly frightening and not at all helpful. And like I said, very skewed. So that's the first piece, what Carrie says about not going into these support groups and what she says about the reason behind that, I think is super important, super valid. Now, if you are in an online support group and you find it uplifting, you find it helpful, that's great. What I used to tell people in my group program was, if you leave a space and you feel worse than when you went in, that's probably a good indication that that space is not supportive and healthy for you. So if, if being in this support group leaves you feeling empowered, leaves you feeling more peaceful, leaves you feeling truly uh, helped by the experience, fantastic, stick to that. But if it leaves you feeling terrified, if it leaves you feeling disempowered, scared, it's probably not the best space for you to be in. Okay, so let's move on to how Carrie is feeling around all of this. And again, Carrie is representative of so many of us. She was kind enough to allow me to use her email for this video. And so I'm referring to Carrie and Carrie's statements, but Carrie is me. Carrie is probably so many of you. This is something that is so common, so human. And that's what we're going to talk about now. So Carrie has what most of us would probably say we want, right? Her symptoms have resolved. Her gastric emptying has normalized. She has put weight back on. She does not have gastroparesis at this point. And again, this is not a completely unheard of occurrence. I have two members of my own extended family who had really severe gastroparesis symptoms for an extended period of time, and then they went away and they've had no problems since. But Carrie's brain is stuck in the fear of what she read on the internet, which was, you might get a break, but it never goes away. And her brain latched onto that because that's what brains do. When Carrie read that, she got really, really scared, which makes sense. If I had read that when I was newly diagnosed, I'm pretty sure I'd get really, really scared too. And so it was so scary that her brain latched onto it. And her brain keeps reminding her of it in an effort to be helpful. And so right now in this moment, Carrie doesn't have gastroparesis. Carrie doesn't have a, a problem here. The only thing that's going on is that her brain is playing some tapes, some habitual tapes. Her brain is saying, it could come back. You better be on the lookout. What's going to happen if? Da -da 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 -da. And Carrie's looking really closely at that and taking it very seriously. And as she keeps looking at it and taking it seriously, the brain is like, okay, this must be important. I'm going to keep playing it. It's like if you picture, you know, a field and you want to make a dirt track in that field and you just drive around and around and around and you wear down all the weeds and the grass and the more you drive, the more defined the field becomes, right? It's kind of what's happening with the brain. You're just going around and around this thinking loop and it's just becoming more defined and defined. But I mean, the beautiful thing about that is as soon as you see what you're doing, it automatically less, looks less important, right? You get a little bit of space from it, even a tiny bit, even a tiny bit of space. But if we go back to that track, what happens if you stop driving around the track? It becomes overgrown again, right? And at some point you don't even know a track was there. And it's kind of similar with our thinking. I once heard somebody say that thoughts can die from neglect. And I thought that's so interesting to think of it that way, right? The less attention we pay to these scary thoughts, they just stop coming around because the brain says, well, I guess that's not helpful. You know, we don't have to keep going around that track anymore. And it's not like an effortful don't pay attention because, oh my goodness, try not to pay attention to something. You have to pay attention to it in order to not pay attention to it. It's just really starting to see it for exactly what it is. It is a thought loop caused by one little thing that your brain latched onto at one point and thought was important. It's not true. It's not important. It's not personal. 
right? It's just something that keeps showing up in the machine that is your brain. And starting to see that just gives you a little distance and it makes it feel less important. And you pay less attention to it and it stops coming around as often. And that's exactly how all of this inside out stuff that we've been talking about, that's how it works. And so when Carrie starts to feel really worried and terrified, it has nothing to do with gastroparesis. That feeling is pointing her to one thing and one thing only, and that is her brain is really busy. I mean, it's kind of a blessing that we feel bad when we have a lot of thinking because that feeling, that worry, anxiety, overwhelm, that is pointing us straight to the fact that we are caught in a thought loop. And that has nothing to do with the about, right? We think we're worried about gastroparesis, but we could just cut it off right there. Like we're worried, period. We're worried because we're having worried thinking. That's it. That's it. Because in this moment, Carrie does not have gastroparesis. Gastroparesis cannot be scaring Carrie because she does not have gastroparesis right now. What's scaring Carrie is a thought about gastroparesis. But it's a thought, period. Thinking is scaring Carrie, not gastroparesis. And this is true even if you do have gastroparesis right now. If your thinking is, what if I need a feeding tube someday? That's not gastroparesis scaring you. You don't need a feeding tube right now in this moment, right? If you're worried about needing one in the future, that inherently means you don't need one right now. And so what is scaring you? Thinking, right? That what if which is always like a blazing sign pointing toward thinking. If anything starts with what if, that's a thought because that's not happening right now and it exists nowhere but in your thinking. So the more we see this, the more it just gives us, like I said, that space and there's nothing to do you don't try to change your thoughts. It's really just about understanding what's going on here. Where is this experience coming from? What feels so terrifying in a moment where Carrie's perfectly healthy? And again, Carrie is all of us. It doesn't matter what part of you know your journey with gastroparesis you are on. We all do this all the time. I do this still. But the beautiful thing is like once you catch on to it, you know, now I know, oh, I'm in these feelings that's pointing me toward I have a lot of thinking. That doesn't mean I immediately don't have those feelings. That doesn't mean I immediately don't have that thinking. But it does remind me that I don't have to do anything with this thinking. And the last thing I want to talk about is the fact that if gastroparesis does come back, it can be a completely different experience. So all of this that's been said we have no control truly over whether we are gastroparesis free forever whether gastroparesis comes back we don't know what's going to happen down the road right but even in instances where it does come back your experience of it can be completely different and you can still have freedom from the suffering around it and that has been my case and that's what I talk about in my video about finding freedom from gastroparesis. It is a completely different experience and that is available to everybody. And that's why we're making these kind of videos because it's not just for people like Carrie whose gastroparesis resolves and they're still really consumed by the fear that it's gonna come back. It's also for people who have gastroparesis right now and they're consumed with fear over the future and how long they're gonna have this, and what it's gonna look like, and what's gonna happen. This applies to all of us. This holds so much peace and freedom for all of us. So we're gonna keep talking about it. Make sure you are subscribed to this channel. 
make sure you have joined my mailing list. You can do that at crystalsocharlie.com or livingwithgastroparesis.com. And I hope this was helpful. I hope this uh, gave you a little food for thought, a little peace of mind. I would love to hear what you heard in the comments below. And I will talk to you again very soon.